Hello. So how are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Okay. Will you tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. <laughs> Um, my name is Marie José. I'm 23 years old. I'm from Lebanon, and um, I'm a chemistry student. I studied three years at the Lebanese University in Lebanon, and then since I was a little kid, I always wanted to travel and study abroad. So that's why, after finishing my bachelor degree, I decided to go to France and do uh, and go to an engineering school. So after my grad undergrad Jewish studies in Lebanon, I applied to France and moved there. It's been two years now and in my third year I'm here in Manchester as an exchange student just because being abroad is something I really like to do and uh, I'm benefiting from the, the opportunity of being able to travel while I'm studying. So that's basically it now. <laughs> uh, wait. No, uh, if um, so, basically, also I have. I'm gonna talk a bit about my family. <laughs> I have one younger sister; she's three years younger, and one older brother. He's three years older, so I'm kind of like in the middle. Um, we've we we're really on like good terms, and like I I'm really close to my family, and that's kind of like the the thing when you're abroad and away from your family where you're always thinking do i want to come back do i want to stay abroad and these kind of things and um what else do you want to know should, should I, that's pretty much it i don't have a favorite color because i don't know <laughs> for me i can adapt with any color i think that's it, okay. I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> Why chemistry? Ooh. <laughs> okay, so it's a bit of a complicated story. So when I first uh, got into college at university, I did. Uh, I went to the Lebanese university and the system in the Lebanese university is like the first year is a common year to all medical studies like medicine, uh, pharmacy, uh, biochemistry, chemistry, biology, like it's common to all these so it's a pretty intense um, year where we learn like biology, chemistry, physics, math and everything to cover everything for all of these. So uh, at first, uh, my purpose was to do to go into medical school, and uh, I uh, in the Lebanese university normally, if you have a certain average, you can do the the test to go into this medical school. So I did the test and I didn't get in. So at first, I was really like hesitating on what to do and what like what else other than medicine because I was really focusing on that. So. I had an option on either repeating my year and applying uh, and applying to medical school or just do chemistry or biochemistry or biology. So I decided chemistry for many reasons. One, it's because like it's really interesting uh, subject. It's like present everywhere. Uh, especially if I want to continue in research, like if you want to do, if you want to synthesize like a medicine or whatever, we have to use chemistry. Mm -hmm. And because I wanted to go also like in, my, in high school, I was thinking a lot of what is chemical engineering. It was really new and I didn't know much what is it. And it seems kind of interesting to me, but I never had the courage like to say I want to do chemical engineering because I mean, I didn't know much about it, but it seems like an interesting idea. So I, and since I've always wanted to travel abroad and I had a cousin who did chemistry and traveled to France and it was like a really easy pathway. And um, I saw like how he did it and it kind of inspired me to do the same thing. So I did chemistry and then I applied to a school of engineering to combine both chemistry and chemical engineering. So that pretty, pretty much why chemistry. Uh, I think, yeah, so mainly 
as I've always loved medicine as well, so I chose my master's in biology and chemistry. So in the School of Engineering in Montpellier, where I'm currently studying, there's it's really good in health. And that's why I chose this school, because it's like combining, it's really good at like pharmaceutical studies. So I'm doing this master's and here I'm more focusing on leadership and group projects because at the same time as I love research, chemistry and biology, I love a lot working with people. So I'm kind of like trying to combine both now. So that's why I'm here more in Manchester as well. So that's it. <laughs> Do you have any hobbies that you would like to talk about? Uh, I do. Um, and while I was growing up, like from grade nine to grade to like my last year of university in Lebanon, I was playing the guitar and studying, like, yeah, studying, playing guitar and music theory lesson or taking music, taking music theory lessons as well. Um, I don't know if it's really my hobby or not because at first I really liked it and I was really motivated and I was learning a lot of stuff and I had the time to do it but once I got like into college and didn't have enough time to do it I kind of like neglected it so now I'm not doing that anymore but at some point in my life it was really important I also love uh, traveling a lot now Especially after like traveling to France and then going back to uh, I I've experienced like three international experiences I don't know like the phrase is not that good so I first came to, uh, went to France for two years stayed there and then I got the opportunity it wasn't expected at all but it was such a great opportunity I got to do my internship in Germany and then I got accepted to come here to Manchester so these all of these experiences just make me realize how much I love traveling meeting new people and being around several like different cultures and what I really appreciated about especially Germany and Manchester is like I'm not meeting a lot of people from my country like I love people from my country, of course, don't get me wrong. It's just, it's giving me the opportunity to meet other cultures and interact with them and like do this exchange of ideas, culture, um, I don't know, lessons. You learn a lot from people you meet and it's been a blessing and uh, just, it's been amazing. Like I've, if you ask me, three years ago if I'm going to do that do you think you're gonna do this this and this I would say it's impossible so that's one of my biggest hobbies right now <laughs> so do, do you have your dream countries you, you said you like traveling so do you want to I did have before like before it was France because like since we like I was French educated and like France was the easiest country to go to, but I uh, I love like I used to have like specific countries that I really want to visit, like for example Denmark that I really want to go to Denmark, and um, uh, I also really wanted to go to Italy. But like now after going to unexpected countries, I realized that. I could like any country would be just as great as the other. I don't think I would have a preference for one country. For now, I'm just like I'm also want to experience like more Thailand and <laughs> India and the other side, of Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, like the other side of the world. It's it's quite like I don't know much about it, and I'd be interested to find out more. <laughs> what makes you angry? Um, arrogance <laughs> uh, and like yeah I just when I see like I don't have to be in the situation but what I see this a kind of situation arrogance or like people not being like um, someone else is like uh, controlling uh, not controlling but like yeah kind of controlling uh, their weaknesses and being a bit 
like arrogant <laughs> it's just something that i i really can i really don't ex accept it as much as i accept other things so yeah i would say like arrogance is what makes me angry the most <laughs> what else do i have something else like small things like doing the nails on the <laughs> on the wall and like this these sounds but like not these are not deep things like yeah mm. what makes you excited to wake up in the morning <laughs> oh <laughs> that's a tough like not a tough but um that's a nice question actually um do you mean now or like in general now like I like I said before like n now I'm in a phase in my life where like I'm always experiencing new things and that experience is what's, what makes me motivated to wake up and I don't know just the fact that I get to meet new people every day it's really really nice and exciting for me and uh, just the like i i think that uh, most people would agree on the fact that if we're always waking up to new things and new uh, new challenges exactly most importantly new challenges as well i think that uh and not having this um routine every day i think it's a reason enough to wake up motivated and happy what's the most challenging thing that you've done like this traveling on my own like when I traveled the first time to France I was with my friend and like I was kind of stay like I was a bit de I was dependent a de very dependent person like I was like too lazy to think on my own uh, yeah okay he'll help me she'll help me I was like a very dependent person so when I went to France, I got to be more independent, but at the same time, it wasn't like that, that strong independency where you're on your own discovering everything. So it started with going to Germany on my own and then coming here to Manchester on my own. And like uh, ever since I was in grey in my sophomore years, I was... Ch I was I decided like everything that I'm afraid to do I want to do it and ever since I'm having every day a new challenge one of them is uh, speaking in front of like just being myself and speaking to people one of them was like meeting people that easily I said like why would that why am I afraid or not good at doing that so I just challenged myself and did more activities that allowed me to meet people and I'm just ever since I'm really trying to overcome everything that I fear or I don't like about myself. So what you don't like about yourself? Um, so, okay, when I was in high school, first year in high school, I was this really shy, shy person. So whenever I want to speak in front of people or meet a new person, I would just get this redhead person. They used to call me redhead whenever like um, I speak in front of a very group of people. I just get really shy. And then um, I remember I was afraid to go to camps where I don't know anyone. So I challenged myself and went to participate in a lot of camps in my village. Um, and I've been to camps where all people from different villages in my country just participate in it and got to meet a lot of people from different areas in Lebanon. That was my first challenge is to overcome my, uh, how do you say, my shy, um, the fact that I'm shy. Mm -hmm. Second is uh, getting out of my comfort zone and traveling because as I said, I was really dependent. like. 
I was like, and in my family, my father and mother like always made sure that we have, that we're like uh, really uh, comfortable with everything. Like my mom wouldn't allow me to help her in the chores and at home. She said, no, go study, do something else. I will do it. You have all your life to do that. My father, like all of paperwork that I want to do, he just used to do them. I didn't know how to make, I didn't know how he made my insurance. Anything about bank accounts, I knew nothing about. I didn't know what a credit card was. Like it, it was really that bad. I was a very dependent person. And uh, the fact that I got to do all of these uh on my own was was a big step for me at least and to live on my own because i was this kind of person that i can't even study on my own like i have to study with a group of people or i have to be surrounded by people all the time because i was just kind of like no on my own i don't like it now i'm going out on my own a lot i'm i'm discovering more and more like what can i do alone and most the biggest challenge now I remember it and the biggest fear I had is I get a visa rejected. Uh, before coming here, like my dad helped me with all of the visa procedures that I had to do in France for coming to, for going to France. And I was like really nervous about it. And I, I like the v visa application used to scare me a lot. Like, you know, it's dealing with a government, a country that's deciding whether if they rejected me, it means like, it would ask a big question, like why would they reject me? So uh, this summer I had to do a visa to come back here, to come here to Manchester and it got rejected the first time. So the biggest challenge for me was if it was the old me, the very dependent person, I would have called my dad and started crying and tell him like, I got my visa rejection, what should I do? What should I like, what happened? The thing was, is I was at work, uh, people that were, that I worked with were really, really helpful. Uh, it got me realize like how kind and friendly there is because they were really supportive. Uh, I was really sad, at, I, I got really sad at work, but like once I got home, it was like, I felt really comfortable. I started. I started thinking about what could I do about it. I thought about it, didn't call my dad. And when I uh, made everything, like when I made a plan of everything and started making that plan and solved everything for another visa application, I then called my dad and told him everything. So I kind of like, this was my first like step of independency. Is it that a word, independency? Yeah. <laughs> um, is that uh, I had my biggest fear come realize that a country rejected to come there and like it's England it's especially England because I've always wanted to experience a student life in England so uh, as it got rejected I got sad I'm not gonna deny that I cried a little bit but then it was I kind of was surprised from my reaction and the way that I said that I'm really gonna do this, I'm gonna try to solve it and I'm not gonna call my dad and I managed to do that so that's the like now I remember that it's one of the main challenges I had this year. And where do you see yourself in maybe 10 years? <laughs> okay uh, in 10 years so then I'll be 33. <laughs> Um, I would love to see myself having a family with kids and a husband and a home uh, and especially like that's the main thing that I want in 10 years um, and of course having like a job where I wake up excited to go to every day and just keep doing the things that I love to do like not having to and keep meeting new people as well. <laughs> I mean, that's it. I wouldn't ask for more, I think. Like, a good job, family, that's healthy. <laughs> and I think that's it. I, I don't think I have much to add on this. What was Big Marie like? 
What? Me as a child. Ooh, I had never. <laughs> I had very like, um, very varying like childhood. So me as a child. Uh, if um, if you want to compare with me and my sister growing up, uh, I was all, always like this shy, shy child that like was calm all the time, didn't speak much. Like no, I wasn't that calm because I told you I had a varying and my sister was the one with the very strong personality and like she's not afraid to do that and that like everyone's saying she's strong and stuff and then I was when I was like six seven year old I was really the strong girl that whenever like if a guy come hits me I would just run after him to hit him back because like you can't hit me like <laughs> I was this very very strong girl where nothing like no one can do like mess with me mm -hmm. and then in grade six I started becoming like you know when you go when you start becoming a teenager and like you start like you know <laughs> all the teenager stuff I was becoming really calm a shy person not very talkative and just living a normal life where i'm going to school my family friends and but yeah yeah and then i've become a very talkative person <laughs> um do i a child yeah that's it like i had a very calm and nice childhood with my family and especially brother and sister we had a lot of things to do together it was such a nice time is there anything you would like to change about the world if you could change anything about the world what would you change Ooh, a lot <laughs> i think a lot of people would change a lot of the world um First, I would change like this big variation between like, how can I say it? This big discrimination, like especially in people where like a lot of kids can live this lux luxury life and get whatever they want, where other kids just the very normal things they can't, the very like basics like food, they can't even get it. I think it's one of the biggest problem because it's so unfair. I would change that, this huge discrimination. I would change as well. Also the this variation between countries. Like this country, how, like, I don't know, like a lot of people in some countries suffer from things just because of their government is still like uh, doing stuff that another country did 200 years ago. I don't know how to explain that and I would change the fact that some countries need to go to do a visa to go to other countries and the others just can go anywhere without even bothering themselves to do visa. I'm just saying that because I suffered from that. <laughs> so yeah, I think there's a lot, a lot of things to change in the world. If I want to talk about them all, it would just take <laughs> forever. But like, these are the main things I think like discrimination most of, like if we want to combine everything I said it would be like this discrimination between the people what is your superpower like oh. if you could have a superpower ah if I could have a superpower or if you have one no I don't <laughs> what is your superpower is anything you're very good at and then pretend it's a superpower what is it okay <laughs> I think I I don't like this question. <laughs> um, I think now I'm very comfortable in meeting new people. I'm not at all afraid of approaching another person, and I it's something that it's not that I I'm good at. It's something that I really love to do. That just go talk to them just 
and I sometimes I feel too comfortable at the first time <laughs> so yeah um, yeah just because it was a very big problem to me when I was growing up so now I'm just happy that I'm just so comfortable doing it just because I love to do it but I couldn't do it but now I love and I could so. <laughs> Um, like are we talking about this superpower where it could never happen like magic and stuff or like it's up to you would you like something supernatural or just something that you don't uh, possess ah uh, yeah uh, I'm gonna have to give a little thoughts for that <laughs> um, what would I like to do you want us to give you some options? Yes. So we've had people who want to travel in time, we've had people who want to be invisible, mm -hmm. we've had people who would, um, I don't know, what else? Um, disappear, disappear. Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, yeah. in some way without traveling, just like a teleportation. Yeah. 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 And some people wish that they were more like talkative. So yeah. It's up to you what you feel like something will improve your life. Uh, well, actually, these things that you talked about, like traveling through time and stuff, these are good things, but like, these are really nice things, like everyone would love to do them, but like, I don't think they will be very interesting for me. But mentioning traveling through time, what's interesting for me is just what I really love to do now. If I want to travel in time just to see how 60s and 70s were, I love to know how people lived in the 60s and 70s. Why? I don't know. I feel like back then uh, the world was different. Like I think like people were less superficial than now. Like without all of this technology and stuff. I mean, even though it's very beneficial now, we have technology, we're improving a lot. I'm not against it. But like, I would love to see how it was before that, like how people lived with like, how the modesty. I really love to see that in 60s and 70s and how families were. I don't know, it seemed interesting to me and <laughs> kind of like um, something I would love to see. <laughs> so what does family mean to you? <laughs> a lot like I'm not gonna ex like I'm not gonna be this person who says like I don't know it's I think it's for me it's the most important thing I don't know family is precious <laughs> to me so yeah I don't know how to describe it properly or more than that but it means a lot <laughs> just just because of the fact that um, I've never like I've never seen such a big sacrifice of elsewhere especially from my parents like my father gave away a lot of things that he loves to do just for us to do them and I don't think I would ever be able to do all of the things that my parents did for us so at least I love to do ha half of them, <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah. What does sacrifice mean to you? Sorry, I kind of mentioned only my father, but it's my father and my mother. <laughs> um, sacrifice. It's just like when you stop doing things that you really love, just to see the people you love doing the things that they love. Like my father just, for example, loves to go out a lot with his friends and uh, maybe he he's kind of I kind of like took a lot of his personality he loves always to like see his friends go out and stuff but like ever since he got married and had kids he had to he like I never see him uh, with his friends without his family for example like he we know all of his friends kids and all of his friends because he's always taking them taking us everywhere and even when he wants to go out alone with them he just never does it never like I don't know why and my mother is just 
a small example I think every mother would like a lot of mothers as well like would do that like um, for example I'll give a small example and you'll get what sacrifice is um, my mother had a wedding in two days after two days and she went with my aunt to do some shopping so she didn't buy everything because my aunt came really angry at my mother just the fact because she was my aunt was trying to look something for my mother and my mother was always at the kids sections trying to see something that we would like and she didn't buy anything that day and my aunt went really angry about that so that's a small example what does love mean to you oh my god uh, the thing i just said <laughs> Like what my parents did is this the biggest proof of love, I think. Like when you um, care more about the f people around you than you care about yourself. I mean, you should care about yourself, of course. I mean, I don't know if you've seen this YouTube for Oprah. I don't know if you've seen it, but like one should love his, himself a lot as well, but like I'm just describing what loves mean. It's just to care to others as well as much as we care about ourselves. Does sacrifice have to be in a love relationship? Or can love exist without sacrifice? Ooh. <laughs> Why did she come again? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, sacrifice is part of love, yes, but I mean, it depends on the situation, I think. Like, sometimes some, I don't know, oh my god. No, I think at some point, if you really love someone, you're gonna have to sacrifice. At some point. Like, if you really love them, there's going to be a situation where they need you in some place or some situ some situ I'm saying situation a lot. <laughs> and then you're going to have to do a, some sort of act of a sacrifice. So I think, yeah, they're related. If you could give yourself a piece of advice, a message for yourself in the future, what would you say? Did you answer on that question? <laughs> I didn't. I started, but I didn't finish it. <laughs> um, I mean, that's a beautiful question, but it's very hard for me. <laughs> what would I want to say to myself? I would say, like, in the future, I said I would love to have, like, kids and family. I would say just remember what your parents did for you and do the same for your family. <laughs> just that. Because, yeah, it's really important. What else? Nothing. I think it will be enough for my future self. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>